could use growing spiritually. Um, <coughs> and also you want to have a goal, which is a wonderful family goal, to give back something. To give back something. Because we've been given so much in this country, and we've had so many opportunities, that I think a large part of our goal should be to give back. Because actually, you know what happens when you give back? You get. You get. You feel good about yourself. You know, I share this information with you guys today. Um, I'm going to feel really good, especially if somebody actually goes home and does something with it. <laughs> you know, if somebody comes back and tells me, yeah, you know, well, I already did goals, like most of some of you said, you already did goals, and that's fine. But when you go to a seminar, when you go to a presentation, I think what you really need to do is try to, if you already know what the people say, and let's face it, goals, most people know goals. I mean, I, tell you, I figure three or four people are going to come today. Um, so I'm pleasantly surprised. But, you know, even if you've done it, you might hear something, or this is how I go to presentations, you might hear something that even though you knew, you're not doing it right. You know, you're not doing it. Or there's a little twist you could do on it. Like some of you today, maybe you hadn't really thought about what kind of niche you could add to your market marketing. What, what you could offer next year that maybe you're not offering this year. And again, right off the top of your head, <coughs> you might say, if I said, you know, what could you offer next year that you aren't offering this year? How could you change? And you'd probably just say, I don't know. I, I don't know. You know, I'm doing everything that I know to do. But when you really think about it, you might not be. Now, what if you're an employee, though? Because we've mostly talked about uh, entrepreneur-type people, and that's mostly what we are. But what if you're an employee? Let's take Cheryl here. Cheryl works for the chamber. So Cheryl, you know, she can't make decisions mm -hmm. for the chamber. But, and Ruth works for the bank, and, and you know, she, Ruth has employees mm -hmm. at the bank. <coughs> so Cheryl is an employee. <coughs> So what they can do with goals, they're not left out though, because what Cheryl could do, the chamber, and just so happens, I'm really familiar with the chamber, um, it, is Cheryl could say to herself, well, you know, I, I really want to make a difference in the chamber. I really do. And I want to be noticed, and I want to get a raise. Bottom line, we do always, don't we? <laughs> uh, <laughs> so my goal is, <clears throat> my goal is to add enough value so that the people are going to say, wow, that Cheryl is really good, and give her a raise. So she might think, you know, look around as she's doing her job and stuff, and, and say, how could I improve this without, without working more hours and costing more money? <laughs> you know, how, what could I do to make a difference? So maybe it's something with membership, which is always good, because, you know, that we make money with membership. So maybe she could think, well, you know, what if I did, what if I sent out, included something in the packet that gets sent out or something to make a difference. And maybe she could meet with, uh, we're getting a new director soon, and maybe she could meet with the new director and say, you know, I don't know if this will work, but I really, this next year, I would really like to see the chamber grow. And I would really like to be a part of that. I would really like to help. And I had this idea, and if we could try it, that would be good. <coughs> and so the director, what's the director <coughs> going to think? Ruth, if one of your employees comes to you like that, you're going to think, that's good, right? I love initiative. I love it. Yeah, you're going to think, wow. You know, I'm going to keep, even, even if the idea doesn't work, you're going to keep an eye on that employee. Yeah. You're going to think, and what are we all going to think as directors here at the chamber? You know, I'm going to hear that Cheryl did this, and I'm going to say, wow, you know, I'm going to put in a good word for her everywhere I get a chance. And I'll say, you know, that Cheryl, I, she earns her pay here. And I mean, I've said that many times with Carol and Marie that we used to have. I tell you know, the directors, the other directors or whomever, I say, you know, they earn their pay because they're, they're, they've gotten people to join, et cetera, et cetera. Now, Ruth, what, she's an employer. What if she went to her employees <coughs> with, the, with the goal? And she may go with the employees and say, you know, guys, this year, you know, the times are kind of bad, but this year the bank really wants to achieve this goal. And if we all work together, we can because we always need to be inclusive, don't we? We all, everybody likes the team concept. Then her employees are going, her employees, and, and she's going to notice what they do, you know, is that when they do something good, and she's going to, she's going to keep track of the goal. <coughs> so, you know, then that's, that's a way that even if you, even if you're not in control, you are kind of con in control because you can help the bigger cause. 
and, and make your own goal. Does that make sense, Cheryl? Um, so, does anybody have any questions? Surely somebody has some question mm -hmm. about. It's pretty yeah, good. Kind of <coughs> Surely somebody has some question about setting the goals, <coughs> what you should do, or anything you should look Shirley. for. <laughs> what, Ken? Don't call me Shirley. <laughs> <laughs> what are your goals? What are my goals for what? Your goals for your business. Well, the goals for the business would be too long to share because, you know, there's a lot of things involved. You have to do the strategies and everything. So I didn't mean what their goals were. I just meant questions about setting the goals. You know, do you have any questions about that, John? It's not a question, but I just wanted to compliment you on the overall view of things. I, about 40-some years ago, I got a job with a Fortune 100 company, and I was assigned the task of putting together a marketing plan, everything from A to Z. The part that got me the most was he wanted a one, three, and five year plan. I could hardly think beyond two months at the time of my life. If you have that kind of, even if you're off by 50% or whatever you're off, if you have that goal out there, it's something to strive for. You you put your signature on that <laughs> to your boss. Mm, yeah. <laughs> and does it mean I can't? You know what I'm talking about, don't yes, you? Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and uh, it, it, it doesn't mean you can't change it a second or third year out if you have an understanding boss. But uh, if you don't, change jobs, by the way. <laughs> um, but, you better but, be committed to what you set for yourself. That's right. And all I'm saying is that you know, you, you, the longer, the further out you can plan, the better. And I, I do. I, I left after 28 years with a, a company, and I started my own consulting business. And I've discovered that some people actually spend more time planning their vacation <laughs> than they do with their business. You know, and, um, uh, and that's too bad. <laughs> When somebody and, and most people, that, <laughs> most people that you're retired. Uh, I was going to say he, he can do that now. He can afford that. <laughs> most, most people that teach goal setting, that's the first thing they always say. You know, well, where do you see yourself in five years or ten years? And that just always makes me like crazy because you know I'm I'm thinking about today and and of course for some things you do have to look ahead. I mean you can't burn all your bridges, but. You know how many people go to their grave striving for that something in the future and they miss the journey? I think that every single day you should live as close to your dream as you possibly can and do as much good as you can. Now, five years from now, if you say you want to go, you know, live on an island, that is a wonderful thing and, and who wouldn't want to do it? But, you know, if you're striving and you're saving and you're doing everything to go live on this island, you're missing so much along the way. I think that we should take our dreams and we should try to find little pieces of them that we can incorporate in our everyday life. And, and I think we should be really specific about our dreams and we should be, you know, we should be just looking at, at, at everything, not as part of, not as part of, of, of a long-term goal, but as part of our, our goals as we go along. And, and our goals, if we can help our children and our family, if we can incorporate those in. Or And it, the, well, another thing is to tell your goals. Do you tell people your goals? That's something that people always struggle with, too. Now, some people feel really comfortable just say, wow, I'm going to improve my business by 50% this next year. And they tell everybody. And sometimes that works for them. You know, because everybody says, oh, well, how are you doing? You know, 40%, 50%. 10%? I mean, what do you do? But most people, what happens is they tell somebody their goal. Like right here, if we told, if everybody here said their goal, there would be people that would tear that goal down. And goals are like, goals truly are like seeds that get planted. And the little seed comes up, and somebody comes along, and if they step on it, it dies. And that's what happens to our goals many times. Um, Carol, as a, matter, as a matter of fact, I just had this happen to me. And I do a lot of presentations and stuff. You know, it's not like I'm really shy. But I am, of course. But 
uh, just, I was doing this, seminar, I was doing this presentation, you know, and I was thinking, well, I don't know, you know, if anybody's really interested in goals or, or what. So I had a lot of doubts, you know, to start with. So we were at the mixer the other night, and Carol, being trying to be a nice person, uh, which she is, I, I, I said to her, I said, well, Carol, you know, we don't have any, pig, we don't have any, you know, flyers here or anything about the Munch and Learn. So then she's trying to make it up to me. You know, she said, well, that's okay, I'll do an email blast, you know. And, and so I knew she would. And, and uh, so she's trying to make me kind of feel better, though. And, and she goes over to somebody that we just happen to be sort of standing there by, and she said to this person, and I knew this person didn't like me. I mean, I'm not saying who it is, but I knew they didn't like me, you know. But Carol didn't realize it. And uh, so, so Carol says to this person, oh, you can come to Florine's presentation at Munch and Learn. She's going to do goals. And this person said to me, well, she just looked at me, you know, she said, well, what do you do? And I said, I'm a realtor. She said, I knew that. <laughs> she said, "What are she said, what are you talking about?" Mm -hmm. And I said, "Well, you know, lie, because I just wanted to get away. I knew it was negative." <laughs> she said, "Well, if you haven't figured it out by then, you know, but, oh, if you haven't figured it out by now, who cares?" And I said, so "I felt like saying, oh, Carol, I'm not doing it." <laughs> and that's the way. But I just laughed, you know. I just laughed. I said, "You're right," and, and moved on. But that's how our goals get squashed many times. And then we start thinking, why did I ever think I could do that? It's not that we can't make our goals. It really isn't from outside forces, but we just allow people to control our life. We allow people to squish what we have. So if you're going to tell your goals, be really careful who, that you tell them to somebody that's going to support you. And by the same token, one of the things you can do is to support other people in their goals. Even if they haven't, you know, even if they haven't verbalized them, you can be an encourager. And that's a good thing, the chamber. The chamber gives you an opportunity to encourage people. I've encouraged people to do things that, not that, not that they didn't want to do, but just because I felt like that they would like to do it, but they just didn't have the nerve, you know, to step up and do it. Right, Fatima? I <laughs> <laughs> can, yeah. <laughs> and and I know, and I, you know, so it, that's that's a way that we can help each other. That's the way we can help each other, and uh, that that's just the best. That's the best. So thank you all for coming. If you ever have any questions, can oh you were raising your hand. That's how you wanted to volunteer something. Uh, and I gave this in a speech before that if you if you want to be successful, stay away from negative people. Yeah. Oh, you, you, want, you want to stay with people who are going to reinforce <coughs> whatever you're doing. And you know, and there are negative people. You all know that. And you know, people look at it as a glass half empty instead of a glass half full. Uh, well, you stay with the people that are encouraging, uh, positive. Well, I mean, just that kind of personality. And the other thing is, don't try to do too many things at one time. It's great to set goals, but you got to do things a step at a time. Mm -hmm. You can't do ten things at the same time. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, well, it's all balanced. Yeah, so you yeah, know, of course. You put all your goals yeah. together. Yeah, no, what what you were saying is it's great stuff and got me all revved up too and you know, I go out and do something. Uh, I'll be asking you about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you come to Toastmasters, uh, <laughs> I'll give I that speech again for five to seven minutes. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you all for coming and I hope I'll see you at some of the chamber events. Thank you. Thank you.